welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rachel, the owner of The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. And today's video uh, is just gonna be pretty simple. Um, I have been kind of racking my brain. Um, my shop has been a mess this past week. We put up a faux wall and so I could put up some shelving. We just finally got that all done and I've been scrambling trying to rearrange everything in here and put up Christmas and then it hit me, oh my gosh, I need to do something for my channel to post on Thursday. And I'd already decided I wanted to do a thrift flip video. I just had no idea what. So um, what I decided was I would keep it simple, right? K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. And I would just do these two stars. I love these. I found these at a thrift, thrift store. They're handmade. They're really cool. The only thing is the front of them are both, they're filthy dirty and they're kind of, a lot of the um, little beads on these are kind of coming apart. So they really just need a makeover. And so I am going to redo these to go in with my Christmas displays here in the cottage and they will probably each get sanded and a new paint job so and then from there I'll kind of decide exactly how I want to finish them and then this little table I thought was super cute and it was really inexpensive I didn't have a price on it I took it up to the front and the gal was like how about $2.99 I said yeah that'll work so it definitely needs a little help the top is really loose and um, you can see it's really well I don't know if you can see it or not but the top is really rough and just from age so this guy is going to get I'm going to take this top off take it outside and sand it and then glue it and screw it back down so that it's tight and then try and figure out what color I want to paint it I'm really not sure uh, and then we will see. I just, I don't even know what color I'm going to paint these guys yet. I think the first thing is just getting this stuff off, taking them out in the cold and sanding them <laughs> and then bringing them back in and figuring it out from there. So the place to start obviously is getting this stuff off. So that's what I'm going to do next. And I hope you enjoy the video. First step, take off the old decor. That's what I'm doing here. Just uh, check to see if that star was easily taken out, but no, it's glued in. So I'll have to deal with that later. And then I take the decor off the green one. The uh, ribbon was definitely tied down or glued down pretty well. So took a little effort there, but I got it. Then they went outside and I sanded them. Uh, oh yeah, I had to take out the little light bulb. Um, set that aside for later took them outside as you can see I sanded them really well especially the red one just because I'm going to be distressing these guys and I don't want the red to be the thing that shines through and on the red one what I'm going to do is paint it black and then I'm going to go over it with white and distress it back to the black so as you can see here I'm just painting I'm using little black dress by DIY it's a super pigmented paint goes on really well and one coat generally does the job so it's just great paint uh, and then doing the brown star and getting that all painted and that one's going to stay black so they're all done painted next step is once the paint was dry i put on two coats of white swan by diy another great paint the reason i needed to do two is going over the black it definitely required a little bit more uh, paint. You can get away with one coat of white over really light colors, but when you're going over something this dark, it definitely requires two. Speed that up for you a little bit. Kind of boring watching somebody just paint something anyway here's the second coat going on first thing i do is spritz it i do use my water bottle quite a bit just to thin out the paint a little as i'm putting it on just makes it smoother and easier to move around on a piece finish that up second coat of white and then let that dry 
and then they both go out and get sanded and I just used my rotary sander with 220 and distressed them pretty well you can see on the white one the black sh showing through just a little bit and then the next coat or next step is top coat and I'm taking I'm using top coat by sweet pickens on these so I just kind of pour some on and and brush it around and just make sure that I get a good even coat everywhere I always make such a mess of myself too when I'm painting. Uh, I had this all over my fingers by the time I was done, but part of the hazards of the job. And there it is. I'm just checking that side to make sure that I got some on there. So now once that's dry, next step is using the greenery that I bought. This is just a Dollar Tree um, little pick. I really liked it and so I'm setting it up to be kind of where I want it I'm gonna make a little wreath around the hole so that I can put the light back in it and once I get it kind of configured the way I want it I will start using my hot glue gun and glue everything down so I did manage to get that star free and there were some little stars as well so I'm planning on using all of those in this for this wreath So now that I know where I want everything to go, I'm just taking my hot glue gun and slowly working my way around where I want the wreath to be. Each piece I glue down really carefully and then I add more glue at the ends if I need to just to make sure uh, that everything is staying in a circular shape so that it looks like a wreath hopefully when I'm done being as how that is the objective here. And then once I get to the point of being able to put the star on, I will glue that down with some hot glue as well. So I'm just carefully working my way around the circle. And here I've finally gotten to the point where I'm ready to put the star down. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want it so that it doesn't cover up the hole where the light bulb will go. Once I get that figured out, I very carefully put my first dot of glue and then put the point of the star on that dot. I'm just trying to be really careful because if you get hot glue on the paint, it's a booger to get back off without actually ruining the paint, even with the clear coat on it. I've done it before and it really stinks once the stars glued down i kind of go back through and just take some more pieces of the little pick and fill up the the wreath really well just make sure that there, it's nice and full all the way around and then i here i'm taking the little stars that came in that uh decor and i'm gluing them on to the wreath they were held on by a little bit of wire, so I had to cut the wire off first. But get the three of them on there. And then this one is done. I set that aside and I can start on the black one. On this one, I decided to use some bead garlands that I've had here at the shop. I don't even know for how long. It's been a while, I think probably since last Christmas and so here I am just kind of wrapping it into what I think will be the good a good size for a wreath and then I pick up one of the little pieces of wire that I cut off one of the stars earlier and I just wrap that around the little strands to keep them together and make the wreath a little bit more stable as I'm wrapping and here I am just making sure the placement's good and once that's done I think I've lost something. I don't know. I, I don't know why I picked up the star. I think maybe I was looking for more wires. So I went and grabbed my copper wire and I just cut off some little pieces of that and used that. Uh, I think I put it in three or four different places uh, around the little strands of the garland, just again, to make it more stable so that they all stick together. 
And once that's done and I get them all nice and tight, I can glue the wreath back down to, well, glue it down to the star. So here I am just, again, super careful to put the hot glue exactly where I want it and glue the, the wreath down. And once that's done, I am going to make a ribbon. I decided I wanted to do a really cute kind of shabby chic ribbon on this one. And so how I do that, I take flower sack cloth that I get from Amazon and I put it in coffee, like old coffee, and let it kind of sit for a minute, wring them out, dry them, and then cut them into strips. And I use those as a base for a lot of ribbons. And here I'm just taking those strips and I'm layering them with some lace and some organza and just kind of making almost like a ribbon lasagna. And once I get the layers the way that I want them, I will take some jute or some string or whatever I have and put that in the middle and just tie everything together. So I just take this jute and get it as close to center as I, I can possibly figure without actually getting out the ruler. And then I just carefully tie it in a double knot. once that's done I can take this and of course I fuss with it for a while kind of trying to get all the little strands to lay and with the flower sack cloth there are always strings and, and little bits kind of hanging off here and there so I snip off the, the extra jute here and then it's just a matter of kind of playing with the ribbon and figuring out exactly where I want to put it on the star so I decided I didn't want it at the bottom. That's where I initially had planned on putting it. So then I play around with putting it on the left and the right, trying to decide which side it looks best on. Um, of course, I've got some dangly, so I cut those off. Clean it all up nice. And then this burlap ribbon that I use, I like it. It's cute, but it likes to curl back. And so it's kind of a little booger to work with. And you'll see me kind of fussing with it a little, trying to get it to lay straight, uh, which it always curls back on itself. After a while of sitting on a piece that's standing up, it kind of straightens out over time. Uh, not completely, mind you, but at least some. So here I am just about done figuring out where I want this ribbon to go. And then I grab my glue gun and put some glue on the back and I'll glue it down. Over there, there, get my glue gun. I swear I spend half my time trying to find my tools and my implements. Once it's glued, I have these cute little blingy brooches that I got off Amazon and they just add such a nice pop of just sparkle to these and I just love them. And here they are all finished. I am really proud of how these turned out. I think they're beautiful. And you can see I even got the lights reinstalled and got them working. So they are all done. Project two. So this cute little table just needs some help. So here I am taking the top off the base and you can see the hole is just huge. So I need to sand it, that's next, and I take it outside and make it all nice and smooth, get all that cracked glaze off of it. And next up's paint. So here I'm using, again, Black Swan by, or not Black Swan, Little, it's White Swan, or Little Black Dress. So obviously this is definitely Little Black Dress. So <laughs> I'm using little black dress and I am just giving it a nice coat of paint making sure to hit all the nooks and crannies get the top all nicely painted and I use my little spritzer bottle there to just kind of again help water the paint down just so that it moves a little the great thing about the DIY especially the little black dress they are so highly pigmented that 
I can almost always get away with just one coat of paint with Little Black Dress. Most of the paints are that way, with the exception of some of the lighter colors, especially if you're going over dark, they do require usually a couple coats, but normally two max. Now that I'm basically done painting, I'm going to let this dry and then sand the top of it with my rotary sander. And once that's done, I just kind of give it a good wipe down to make sure that all the sanding dust is off of it. And then I'm going to use a, a shop towel, just one of those blue towels, and I am going to wet distress the base. And what wet distressing is, is just what it sounds like. Basically, you use a damp rag or a damp towel and you wipe away the paint in the areas that you want the wood to show through. It's a really easy process, a little bit time consuming, but it gives you a great result without all the mess of having to sand. And as much as I wanted the top to be sanded with the rotary sander, I didn't want it have to sand the base and basically because it takes off a lot of paint all at once especially on those spindles so next step here is going to be i decided i had some of this midnight floral transfer left and i'm trying to pick out which pieces i want to use for the top of this table now i have to give you a little bit of a disclaimer normally when you put a transfer on a piece you will want to seal it with some sort of top coat first and make sure your top coat is dry. I wanted to actually wax this piece with dark wax when I was done with the transfer. So I am attempting to put this transfer on without sealing the piece first, because if you wax it, you can't stick a transfer down. It just won't stick to a wax surface. So here I am trying to play with the different pieces of the transfer. And I finally decide I'm going to use this leaf and just put it as my base piece first. And with transfers, it's really easy. They're like a sticker. You just peel them off the back, you stick them down, and then all the transfers come with this cute little wood stick. Um, and you basically just use that and push down really hard and rub, 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 rub with the stick and peel that backing up. And here you can see I am putting the next piece of the transfer down. And I have to tell you, this took some time, especially because I had not sealed this piece first. I definitely made it hard on myself and it took me, it was probably a good 45 minutes of scrubbing with that little wood stick to get all the transfer off. And especially in the areas where it was just a line that I was trying to get unstuck off of the backing it was kind of a little bit of a bear, I have to say. I think next time I will probably seal my piece first. <laughs> Just saying. As a rule, that is definitely what you want to do. I like to do things the hard way, it seems like. So here I am working, working, working just to get this transfer down. Normally, it is not this hard. Normally, they go right down. And once they touch a piece of furniture that's been sealed it's all over normally they stick so fast that you can't even get them back up if you wanted to and here i am burnishing and what burnishing means is basically rubbing the transfer into the paint so you just take that piece of plastic and rub it around and just to make sure that the entire transfer is adhered. The reason you don't use your hands is because your hands can be sticky or have paint or residue on them and you could inadvertently ruin your transfer, which you definitely don't want, especially when you worked as hard as I did to get the transfer down in the first place. So here I am, I've got some berries and just kind of arranging my transfers, trying to figure out exactly where I want them. Rub, 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 another 20 minutes of trying to get the transfer to stick. But I finally did have success. I won. So <laughs> I was very happy. And again with the burnishing. And now it's done. So on to waxing. And here I've got um, my Annie Sloan dark wax. I'm trying to use it up. I've got just a little bit left in the, in the can. And I will tell you the key to me, if you're gonna put dark wax on something directly, use a little mineral spirits to thin it out. It really helps it go on quicker. 
And once you're done putting the wax down, you just wipe it back off. Really easy process. And you can wax right over the transfer and it actually helps burnish it down even better than it was before. So I'm just gonna keep on waxing and get all the piece done and then rub the, the wax back off, do the base, same process, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. And then, then you're all done. And for just for general purposes, I stuck the, the top on just so you could kind of see what it looks like. And now glue. So I got out my trusty dusty wood glue. It took me a minute, honestly, because it was stuck shut. And so it took me a minute to get it to go. And so stick that glue on there. And I put the top back on the base. And then I flipped it and here it is all finished. Again, I'm really proud of this piece. It looks phenomenal. I will probably follow the wood glue up with some screws, but for now it's done. So what did you think of the video? I really love the way both of them my projects turn out the stars are super cute i think the table's probably my favorite uh but what did you think which one's your favorite uh and did you like the black or the white star anyway if you like content like this if you want to see more of these thrift flips and some of my thrift hauls and furniture flips and basically a sneak peek into my kitchen and kind of what I do behind the scenes here at the cottage, please subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell and that will tell you every Thursday and Tuesday when I upload a new video. And uh, today is Thursday, my next video will, or no, today's Tuesday. So my next video will be Thursday and that will be my thrift haul from this last week. And we, I went out thinking I was just gonna get a little bit of Christmas stuff. That was my goal. I wanted baskets and stuff for my tree. And we came home with literally the back of our Acura was packed to the point we couldn't have fit anything else in there. So we just happened to get a really nice little piece of furniture that I will be showing you coming up on Thursday. So please stay tuned and uh, watch my video and I hope you enjoyed this and have a great night.